right, welcome to part three. Glad you're still sticking with me here. So this is about the Olympia network. Now, the Olympia network is sort of like a mega, mega release we've been working on for a long time, sort of asynchronously with everything else, and particularly on the runtime side, also on the Pioneer side, obviously, and I'm gonna get to it. Um, and it's such a big release that it's not even uh, scheduled to be the release immediately after um, the Sumer release. Um, so the reason I'm sort of putting it on the table is because it's probably one of those big milestones which may or may not be the last release even before before mainnet probably gonna have one or two big releases even after that but it's like it's a very important piece milestone for where we're trying to go uh, and it's also something that we were working on for such a long time that I thought it was worth sharing um, so what's going on in in this release we are doing two things. One is that we're shipping a new, updated, simplified, benchmarked, and audited runtime, which sees major improvements really across the board and uh, new functionality uh, and, and features for, oh, I would say, every, every subsystem. And then it's the introduction of Pioneer two, version two. Uh, so. Pioneer, for those who don't know, is the governance app where you vote and stake and buy memberships and run for the elections and the council and forum and blah, blah, blah. So it's all the stuff that actually has to do with participating in the system. And Pioneer 2 is, is the um, sort of user-facing application for doing that through a user interface. And uh, I wanna say that really, probably the, the big bottleneck for, for going live with Olympia is actually Pioneer itself. It's a tremendous uh, piece of work uh, in terms of on um, the infrastructure, the design, the um, uh, the application development itself. There are a lot of pieces that are coming together, and we really could have released the runtime uh, improvements that we already have, but it just doesn't make sense for us to try to upgrade the version of Pioneer, which are, that is currently live, that we're calling Pioneer One and try to upgrade them it to work with the new runtime, it's just gonna be a lot of work for very temporary benefits. So our thinking is currently that we really will go live once Pioneer 2 is ready. Uh, and that will simultaneously reveal a system which is quite different in many ways from, from what we see today. The overall structure is of course the same, but there will be you know important improvements everywhere. So I think the best way to, to get a flavor for for what the Olympia runtime currently looks like, and remember it's a moving target, whenever we develop something new that we're not ready to put uh, put out right away, it, it will sort of get go live in the Olympia runtime. And, uh, and we can sort of put it in the context of what we currently expect will be in the mainnet runtime. And you could see that we are on the runtime side. Uh, we're really getting there. There is uh, there are some there are basically two major subsystems that will. Uh, it's open question whether the the channel tokens in DAO is, is a subsystem, but two big pieces that that really we haven't started on at all. Uh, everything else is in some uh, reasonable state of development. To put it that way. In addition, every, oh, again, my, my image is covering that, but we're working with uh, SR Labs, one of the premier auditing firms that work with Polkadot and, and that whole ecosystem, and they've already audited a substantial part of our Olympia runtime to help us identify problems, and that's gone really well. And we're probably gonna do another audit once uh, we're sort of at the, at the um, finishing line, but, uh, we've already done a very meaningful step towards getting production ready, I think. And um, uh, at the same time, we've also done uh, benchmarking, as I mentioned prior. So what is benchmarking? This is one of the important uh, or necessary steps involved in deriving the fees that will be used in your blockchain. If, if you're used to Ethereum, uh, you will know that the fees associated with doing anything is sort of computed on the fly because the whole system is a dynamic and the set of contracts changes and so on. Uh, in in Substrate, uh, there's sort of a step involved in the development process where you try to compute basically how expensive it is to do 
all the operations that people can do in the system. That's called benchmarking. And that l literally boils down to sort of measuring what, how much time each action or transaction, if you will, takes on certain, refer oh, certain reference hardware. I'm skipping ahead here. And, um, and, and we've done that for a big part of the system. We've sort of built that in-house skill, and, and we will be doing that for all of the uh, for all the modules that go into Olympia, which means we will have meaningful transaction fees as well. Uh, I think at the current runtime, basically every every transaction has the same nominal f nominal fee, which is sort of a random number. That won't be the case in Olympia. There is an extra step from from benchmarking to getting fees, um, which is more about figuring out how much you're going to charge per for unit of computation and per uh, unit of block space, so to speak, in terms of your native token. Uh, but that's, you know, that's a smaller exercise. So let me try to just briefly talk about some of the things that have changed. It will be way too much to try to cover all of this. But one of the very, very important things we've changed is that the, uh, in what's referred to as the referendum module here, which has to do with electing the council, you're now able to use stake that you're using for something else. Let's say you're a validator, or let's say you're staking as a working group lead or in a proposal or something, you're able to take that stake and redeploy it to vote or stand for the council. And, and, and this was, a, I think, a big step in the right direction in terms of making it much cheaper for people to participate in governance. Um, in the current system that's live, you really have to pick uh, whether you want to participate in governance or you want to stake, and then it's really easy to get to basically do the do the you know the selfish thing of just thinking about your own private returns on your own uh, Tjoy um, account and, uh, and stake rather than thinking about you know managing the system overall. And if everyone does that, it doesn't doesn't work out as well as as one would like. So that's a very big. Uh, change in the in the tokenomics of the system overall. That stake is basically reusable towards this one specific thing of being participating in elections. Uh, we are introducing obviously the new content directory that I've talked about in Sumer. We're introducing the idea of a, of a constitution, which is a very simple idea actually. It's and we're not I think the first chain to do this, but basically it's sort of a um, social commitment to all the conventions and standards and um, you know, improvement proposals, if you want to follow sort of Bitcoin or Ethereum parlance of, of, of things that are sort of on the social layer of the system. So there are all sorts of metadata standards, for example, about what, how you encode an application for a working group, for example, that would be in the constitution and all sorts of policy things that the chain itself doesn't actually model and capture goes into the constitution. There is a council blog where the council can sort of speak in one voice um, to the system. There is a, we're adding crowdfunded bounties, which is basically a way for community members to fund the uh, creation of all sorts of goods that can be useful for the platform where they don't depend on the council to, to contribute. So if you want to improve some software or really anything, you can um, get people on the system to, 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 to fund a bounty, basically, where someone is uh, tasked with the responsibility of following up with the, fun, uh, with, the, with the bounty and distributing the funds according to what people contribute and so on. And um, what else should I cover? I think maybe that's, I think that's, that's sufficient for you to just get a flavor for, for some of the things that are changing. So that's the Olympia runtime and some of the things that are being changed. Then we have Pioneer itself. So again, Pioneer is the product where you actually engage in governance and participate in the community. So it's extremely important, obviously, given that this is a, a video platform DAO. And uh, we have really for a very long time been using uh, and trying to maintain and evolve a, a fork of the Polkadot apps uh, application. and you know, that has a lot of limitations and problems, not least of which is that you really can only access information that's in the current state of the, um, uh, conveniently in the cur current state, conveniently, conveniently in the current state of, of the chain. 
And that really limits your ability to, to do all sorts of searches and queries and look back into history about who has done what at what time and what happened and so on, which is a critical precondition really for, for people to accumulate reputation and you being able to distinguish, you know, who is a good guy, who is a bad guy or girl for, for various positions and roles and, and everything. So Pioneer 2 is really focused on this this goal of conveniently lifting out all of the historical information that exists in the system where you can understand what the, the, the history of a person is and, and, um, and also actually, frankly, sort of aggregating and summarizing a lot of the complicated state that is in the system into a more digestible form. And a lot of what enables that is on one hand, of course, uh, a product that's been redesigned from scratch uh, by, by a team of excellent designers and but also this uh, infrastructure piece called Hiver, which I'm going to talk about in the in the next update, which allows you to sort of look through all of the transactions and all the events and all the state in one simple query, um, and allows you to do really cool things like, for example, search for anywhere you're mentioned in the forum, for example, or in a proposal, or um, or you could look at all the times someone was fired, for example, in one easy. Um, one easy click. So there are all sorts of ways of lifting out all the information, which currently is sort of either not possible to get out, or your 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 application has to like go and talk to an archival node for you know five minutes or something uh, before it could fetch and filter and, and query and search for whatever you're looking for. So Pioneer Two is really a, a big piece of making it practically possible for for the DAO. To actually work. So that's it. The change runtime Pioneer 2, that's what's coming up in Olympia. Thank you very much. See you soon for Hydro.